This living room's not too cozy, is it? Nope. Well, I think it's time we put some floors in, don't you? It's flooring day! Woo! So before we get any further into the video, we want to talk about today's video sponsor, Ruggable. So this is officially like the first day in probably two months that we can use our living room. We finally got enough flooring down that we can put a rug on it, put our couch on it, and relax. Yeah, up to this point we've been sitting on the floor of our bedroom and then <laughs> flush TV, which has not been very comfortable. So we're excited to have our own yeah. chill space. So what's awesome about Ruggable is that their rugs are washable. So right now we are still living in a construction zone in our house. The rest of the house is still not finished. There's a lot of dust and kind of debris going on. So I need to be able to wash this huge rug. What's so cool about Ruggable is that they actually have a pad underneath your rug. It's made of 95% recyclable materials. Uh, but what that does is it allows the rug to stick to it so it doesn't slip around. But also uh, in order to wash your rug, you just peel it right off the pad and throw in the wash. It's super easy and convenient. So I ended up picking this Zareen Scarlet Red rug because I think it's just gonna go with the theme of our English Tudor style house really well. It contrasts nicely with the oak, white oak flooring, and it's just so pretty and so much detail. I just really love looking at it. So if you guys are interested in Ruggable, check out the link below and use code Jamie and Sarah 10 at checkout for 10% off. Let's get back into the video. Thank you. That is what 5,000 pounds of oak hardwood looks like. That was a workout. So this is utility grade or cabin grade oak. Uh, we paid $2.12 a square foot. It is unfinished oak, so we will have to sand it down and stain it ourselves. That's part of uh, what you're paying for or not paying for. It is going to have a really cool old world feel because there's some knots in it, there's a few imperfections, but for about a quarter of the price, we're really um, gonna have a really cool and unique look. All right guys, so what I am doing now is going through this giant pile of our hardwood floors. I have to sort through and make sure all the pieces are usable. So if you guys have been following along, you know that our hardwood floors are only $2 a square foot for this cabin or utility grade oak. Um, but part of the caveat is that of that is that there are a lot of pieces that might be imperfect or totally not usable. So like this piece, for example, has a knot in it, which is totally okay, but it does go through the back. So what we do is just tape that up and then fill that in with epoxy before we sand it and then it'll be nice and smooth once we sand it. Um, I'm also making sure that all the pieces have their tongue and their groove here. Some of them are missing that, so those pieces would not be usable. And overall, just looking for massive imperfections that I don't really like or that just aren't usable. Yeah, so I'm gonna go through and sort these into piles of long, medium, and small pieces and make sure that they're nice and square by using this tool. That is part of kind of the process of doing hardwood floors like this, but I cannot wait to show you guys the finished product. So I'm gonna get to sorting. So here's that knot, super simple. Just gonna go ahead and tape that up so that when the epoxy is poured through, it doesn't seep into our subfloor. It gets stopped right there, because this is the side you'll see. And then it'll be nice and smooth underneath. So that's all I'm doing. Well, Sarah's out in the garage sorting through a lot of those boards. I'm in here uh, doing some prep work with the subfloor. So one thing we're doing is actually trying to get rid of a lot of the squeaks because the hardwood itself is going to maybe creak a little bit, so we don't want more creaks than necessary. So what we're going to do is walk around until we find a squeak like this. You can hear that. Uh, and then we find where the uh, joist is underneath the subfloor. Uh, they're pretty e easily defined, usually because there's nail holes already. Um, and then we're just going to screw down uh, to draw this down tight against the joist and then hopefully get rid of the squeak. So let's see if we can do it. One other thing for prep we need to do is get our first line started. We need to make sure it's perfectly straight. So this great room is our biggest room in the house. Uh, so we're going to start in here. But basically I need a straight line to go 
all the way across here to nail my first row to. So uh, it's a little bit tricky to do, but it's the most important thing. So what I'm going to do is measure from this wall out to this corner and then keep that measurement all the way across. I'm also going to shine my laser level. We might even do a chalk line just to make sure we have a perfectly straight line all the way from that room across to this one. And then we're going to start working this way. Um, a straight line matters because it's visually going to, you're going to be able to tell, especially by the time you get to that end of the house. So the first row needs to be perfectly straight. Yeah. Chalk line. Two, three. We're going to screw down our two by fours flush with the chalk line. Uh, Lowe's wood is not the most straight, so I'm going to have to kind of screw it and then bend it as I go to make sure this wood is perfectly straight with the chalk line. So, might be a little tricky. So I have my straight line all set up and I'm ready to start nailing. So um, I bought this nailer, it was about 150 bucks. Last time I borrowed this tool, but since this is such a big job, I decided to buy it and then I'll probably end up selling it when I'm done. Uh, but it comes with this mallet. Uh, this metal side is for tapping your wood into place. Notice I said tapping, not hitting. Um, and then the rubber mallet part is actually what hits the back of your um, tool, which shoots the nail into the wood. So that's kind of how that works. The other thing I'm going to be doing is gluing each piece down. Now you don't have to do this. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to do hardwood floors. Most of the time people put down just like a vapor barrier piece of rolled paper. Uh, but because these subfloors are the kind of cork style, they're not as strong, um, gluing down is just going to hold them into place better. This is also has a ba vapor barrier in it. It's called Bostwick's Best. Uh, doing hardwood floors is definitely a two-person job. Uh, Sarah is watching the girls right now, so right now it's a one-person job, but it really uh, makes it a lot easier if you have one person uh, bringing in the wood. I have a shorts, mediums, and a longs pile over here. So they can be like feeding you the wood and also maybe even applying the glue uh, while you nail them. So, but for now it's just me. So I'm going to get started. I'm going to put a nail about every six inches. So start in the middle here. You get the idea. So I'm going to keep going. Okay, so now that we got to this bay window, we have to start cutting angles. And I don't know where I saw this trick, but it's pretty cool. To cut your angle, all you gotta do is put your piece up that you wanna cut, and then take another piece as your straight edge, and then make sure it's flush against the wall, and then just draw your line. And now, that's my perfect angle. So I'm gonna cut that and nail it in. So we have our cut, we're just going to put it in place and see how it looks. Perfect. Day two. Start day two. How's your back? It hurts already, so yeah. It's gorgeous. Look at that. We're trying to cut around this fireplace and it's a little tricky because it's not a straight line. So, I've got this handy little uh, contour measuring tool of sorts. And so what we do is we uh, push it up against the brick. Um, so it gives us a perfect outline of the uh, cut we need to make. So I just need to line it up on this board here. And then in theory, if I cut that, it's going to fit perfectly flush up against these rocks. So we're going to go cut it and see if it works. I'm going to do a dry fit here and see. Looks like it's going to match right up. So 
I'm gonna go ahead and nail this in. So you may be wondering why we didn't just start at this far wall and work this way. Uh, that's because walls aren't necessarily always square with the rest of the room. And we have two big rooms that we're combining, so it's really important that we have our most visible part of the room to have straight floors. So that's why we first laid this 2x4. Uh, you saw that earlier in the video where we started with the 2x4. Uh, now we have enough flooring laid where we can actually start working the opposite way. So we have this stuff, it's called a spline. And it basically turns the groove side of your hardwood floor into a tongue side. So uh, let me show you. This is your hardwood floor that has a tongue side and a groove side. Um, so basically the spline will go in the, the uh, groove side and then now it turns into a tongue. So then I can shoot my nails down through that. So we're gonna put the tongue along this whole edge and then we can work that way. I'd be further than that, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. We're exhausted. We're like a quarter of the way done. A third. I think we're a third. A third. <laughs> Spent three and a half full days. It's exhausting. It's a lot more work than I'm used to. But it, what? You work hard all the time. Are you <laughs> kidding me? But look how gorgeous it looks. Looks good, right? It's beautiful. Worth it. That's going to be awesome, but we got a lot of work ahead of us, so we better get to it. We'll do another video when we sand and refinish the floors, but for now we gotta focus our energy on just getting these things done. So <laughs> we're gonna go do that. See you next time. Bye. Bye.